Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week I have a collab and we are tackling the fabric scraps. So myself and Christina from DIY Mummy we're doing a little collab video this week. So we are tackling the fabric scraps because there ain't one crafter out there who doesn't have a stash. There's something in us that we will not throw out our scraps for whatever reason and um, so we thought it'd be fun to do a few little DIYs and give you some inspiration and see what you can do with your scrap fabric. I tried to keep my projects really really simple that you could possibly do if you don't even have a sewing machine so you could hand stitch and um, so I tried to keep my projects really really simple and beginner friendly because I know a lot of you guys might be maybe you're off work at the moment um, and you're just looking for a bit of distraction and I think now more than ever we need creativity and community and um, so I was delighted when Christina asked me to collab on this video and if you I'm sure you guys know the DIY mommy and her amazing channel Christina was one of the first channels um, or people on YouTube to reach out to me and kind of offer support when I was just first starting YouTube um, and I think we collabed last year on I think it was was a Valentine's Day collab or uh, I know I made a really bad wooden box <laughs> my woodwork skills have improved a lot since then but I will pop a link to Christina's channel. You will get so much inspiration from her channel. Like it's amazing um, the amount of videos that she has and her blog as well is really inspirational. If you're looking for ideas, especially at this moment when, you know, we need the creativity. I'm gonna get straight into the video. Here is what I did with some of my scraps. Here is my pile of scraps. I have a habit of hoarding onto the pretty florals because they're my fave and I just do not want to throw them out. The first thing we're going to make is going to be really simple. We're going to make some coasters and I'm going to do a love heart shape. Now I'm sure you can download a love heart off the likes of Pinterest but I decided I was going to attempt to do mine free handed. By folding the paper in half, when you cut it you'll get this perfectly symmetrical heart even if you may have not perfectly symmetrically drawn your heart. So just a little tip, fold the piece of paper in half. I also just used my cup just to test out the size to make sure that it was big enough and that I had like the right size. To make this it's really simple, I folded over my scrap fabric and I placed my love heart on top. I pinned it and then I cut it out. I then used some fleece that I had lying around and I also used that and cut it into the shape of a love heart. I then sandwiched it all together. So I put the pattern piece facing down, I sandwiched on the felt, and then I popped the top piece on. And I'm gonna simply stitch all the way around, and then I'm gonna use my pinking shears to trim the raw edge. This is so simple and so beginner friendly. You could probably hand sew this, so if you've never actually sewn before, these will be really fun to make. Next up we have some fabric hangers. I randomly had strips of fabric. I think this is because I was doing like a blanket and I ended up with longer strips of scrap. So if you are a blanket maker, this might be a good one for you. I actually ran out of glue gun sticks, which is why I'm just using some cheap sticky glue. So I glued the top and I simply wrapped fabric around the whole hanger. If you have like a plastic hanger, you could probably do this as well. And once I got to the end, I simply, simply glued it in place and that was it. This is so simple and you can layer up your fabric strips so like I took two strips to do this but you could mix and match with loads and also the raw edge kind of gives it a little bit of character. Next up I'm making a little pouch so instead I'm actually doing a catnip pouch for the cats and um, just to thank them because I'm off work at the moment and they're probably sick of seeing me. 
You can also make up your own measurements for this. So I simply have two sides, but on the front side, I'm using two pieces of fabric. So as you can see, I joined them together and I just ironed my seam. So that gives me the front panel. I added a little bit of trim and then I put the two right sides of fabric together. I stitched it all the way around and I left an opening at the top. I got these little, they're like little squishy balls. I actually took them from an old um, toy that the cats had and that they had absolutely wrecked. So I recycled them and popped them in this and I just put some fresh catnip inside. I folded the top. Now, if you are making a lavender sachet, you could hand stitch it. But because I need this to be durable, I machine stitched it because as you will see, these cats are ruthless when it comes to the catnip pouch. I'm also gonna pop in an old clip of when I made a cat collar because it's a great way of using scraps. So some of you may have already seen the next project, but I just wanted to pop it in for anybody who hadn't seen it. So I'm gonna make some cat collars. DIY, we are going to be using an old collar as a template and we are gonna make a brand new collar. For a blondie, I'm gonna use some scrap fabric for this and this is really simple to do. The first thing I'm gonna do is dismantle the old collar and take all of the pieces off. So this old collar has safety clips and I'm just gonna recycle them and I'm gonna use the old piece of fabric as a template for the new one. So I'm just measuring across and down and I'm going to add extra fabric. I will put the measurements in the description box if you wanna follow along because I think most of these um, cat collars they're kind of the same size. So I will pop the uh, measurements in the description box. I just use my sewing marker. Um, so once you apply water, this will dissolve. So I just measured on the measurements to the fabric directly and I cut it out. So for this, I simply found the center of my fabric and I folded both sides inward, which I hope will make sense when you watch what I do. And then I folded it in half again, and this is going to be your strap basically. And I'm gonna put two stitches all the way around it, which I hope will make sense when you see when I do it. So that is pretty much how you make the strap and all we are going to do now is assemble it with the pieces that I took off from the old collar. So I am simply treading through my collar. It's kind of hard to explain what I'm doing so I'm hoping that by watching me doing it you'll see how I got it but I basically I threaded it and then I stitched it in place. So as you can see here I'm treading it through and then I'm gonna fold over the fabric and I'm gonna do a straight stitch to secure it into place. I hope you can kind of get the general idea for what I am doing here and threading it. Don't worry if you don't have an old collar. I have seen people making cat collars and instead of using clips, they use elastic and they simply measure the elastic around the cat's neck. 
I like the idea of the clips and the safety clips because they snap easily when, so if Blondie gets caught um, when she's out rambling, the collar simply just snaps off and it causes her no pain. So I do prefer the little clips over the elastic. So I decided I wanted to add a bow to the collar because this is Blondie after all. So I'm gonna show you how I just made a simple bow. So I measured out some fabric. I think this is three inches in width and length I think is six inches. Um, but I will leave the measurements in the description box for you. Once I was happy with the measurements, I then cut this piece out. I then just done a fold so I ironed it in half and then I ironed the sides inwards. I use my glue gun to pinch it together and form a bow shape but you could hand stitch. I think I was just done with the hand stitching today. Um, and so I use my glue gun and then I use a piece of fabric to stick it to my collar which you're gonna see now. So once you are happy with your colour, you can then just adjust the measurements and pop it onto your cat. As Bondi goes outdoors, if she was an indoor cat, I probably wouldn't have a collar on her. But because she goes outdoors, I want her to look fabulous and people to know that she is owned and loved. I hope you got some info from this week's video and do head straight over to Christina's channel and check out. I don't actually know what she's made with her scraps, so um, no doubt it would be amazing. So do head over and check out Christina's channel. If you have a shot at making any of these, give me an L tag on Instagram. Like I said, the little catnip sacks could be used as lavender sacks. Um, if you want something that kind of smells nice, you could make them, resize them and use them in drawers as well. Like scented drawer. I don't know what you call them. Scented drawer sacks? This doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Pouches. Um, so that is me for this week. Cheeky thumbs up if you got some value from it. Please do share if you enjoyed it. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.